Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Tuesday, October 10th, 2017. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. First, we have to apologize for yesterday. There was no BM5. Dave Biddle was deathly ill. He is thankfully, hopefully, actually back in the mix today. But I will take over the BM5 in the usual Tuesday spot. The usual Tuesday spot also produces Dwayne Long. Dwayne was otherwise indisposed today. So what do we do? We go to the number one guy on the death chart. That's how we do it here. Bill Curlick, the dean of Ohio State Recruiting. Bill, how are you today? Doing very well, my friend. Ready for uh, ready for another day of buck nuts. I don't think you're going jogging today, Bill. How foggy is it outside? You cannot see 15 feet in front of your face here in the Gem City. Uh, not bad here uh, in suburban Columbus, Ohio. And uh, by the time I get around to that, it'll be cleared off. Bill's going on his run, Mr. Consistency. All right, Bill. Going to go through the list here. We're getting kind of an interesting time in recruiting. Everybody's kind of got their own story at this point. And it's almost like we've got some guys that aren't committed. There's some interesting stuff with them. There's some guys who are committed. So I'm just going to kind of go hit or miss down here. <clears throat> Tommy Togai, the defensive tackle from Idaho. Is that correct? He is from Pocatello Highland High School in Idaho. Correct. Every time there's an Idaho guy, I have to check, though, because it's just not that common. He visited Washington this past weekend. Uh, it's always thought to be Washington, Ohio State, and then the Utah and the USC's of the world. Ruth Robbins, the 247 rep at Washington, Crystal Baldwin to Washington following the visit. What is our vibe on Mr. Toe Guy? Well, um, he, he has long had Ohio State at the top of his list. He did visit Washington. It did go well. Um, some connections there that uh, he, he things connected well for him there. Now, having said that, I'm going to do uh, another check on him later today and kind of – I always like to wait uh, a couple days after the official visit to let things wear off. You know, so often, as we know in this business, when somebody comes back from an official visit, they're in love with that school, but that doesn't always last. So uh, I always like to also wait and, and see how they're feeling several days later. And uh, being this is a couple of days after the official visit, I want to get uh, his feel and, and just the general vibe now of how it is. I know how it was right afterwards. It was very high for Washington, but we'll see two days later. So, um uh, I'm not convinced that he is going to c- cancel that USC visit. That's kind of the word, that that's a possibility. Uh, we'll see. But, um, and again, it's like you mentioned, it's always going to have come down to, to Ohio State, Washington, or USC, and that's what I still expect it to come down to. And we'll see what he has to say. He's told me before that he's going to wait and, and announce after that USC visit. We'll see if anything's changed. Okay, that would be a colossal haul. <clears throat> that said, now that they had Antoine Jackson in the fold, I guess I'm not married to the idea of Togai having to be part of this class. Anthony Cook, I am married to having to be part of this class. Speaking of hangover effects, so his Texas visit now is enough in the rearview mirror. Do we feel he has set it himself and Ohio State's back in the mix, or do you feel Texas really did its work about 10 days ago? Well, I think it's tight. Uh, in fact, I just checked on uh, Anthony with a with a good source, uh, pretty well connected, uh, very well connected with uh, Anthony. I think it's tight, uh, and I always thought it was going to be tight. Um, when all the crystal balls were flowing in so heavily for Ohio State, I, I I felt pretty good about Ohio State, but I also said, you know, wait till we see what happens with Texas in that visit. And, indeed, things tightened up. He is still going to make the LSU official visit, uh, and he is still planning to announce on October 30th. So uh, those things have not changed. What has changed is that it is very tight between Ohio State and Texas. I still tend to give Ohio State the lead, the, the edge there. I think uh, that's been where he's wanted to go. But he's getting fooled hard by Texas, and, and it is very close, I believe, between those two schools. I don't think LSU is going to change that on the official visit. I still think it's going to come down to Ohio State or Texas. D-Day is three weeks from yesterday, so that's a huge one. 
Um, I'm not sure. Since he has been kind of thought to be in the fold, I'm not sure we made a big enough deal personally. I don't know. I haven't. That guy has to be in the class to me. Um, if you want to keep up the run on elite, no doubt, first-round draft pick corners, we need Anthony Cook in the class. Bill, should I give up hope that Tyreek Smith will be a Buckeye? I don't think so at all. Again, um, it's a situation where he hasn't made his official visit yet, and he is going to make one. Um, he's going to make it for the Penn State game. And, you know, the, the job that Urban Meyer and Mark Pantone and that whole staff do when they get players in on official visits, that can't be minimized. Um, they do a fantastic job with kids on official visits. And as long as he makes that official visit, and I would be absolutely shocked if he did not, uh, as long as he makes that official visit, I absolutely give Ohio State a chance. I do, you know, obviously Penn State has been the trend with him. And, uh, you know, I think if he were to pick right this minute, yeah, he probably would pick Penn State. But, again, uh, let the Buckeyes get him on campus and see what happens. I know every time I've spoken with uh, Tyreek and his family, they've spoken very highly of Ohio State, and I'm sure the red carpet's going to roll out when he gets in Columbus in a couple weeks. Speaking of the red carpet, Jason Owe, kind of the up-and-coming defensive end, prospect out of Blair Academy in New Jersey. Almost more than any other kid I've ever followed in recruiting, this kid seems to love his visits and love everyone he meets and really be enjoying the process. But it almost seems like the last place he visits, he's just going to bring his bags and stay there. What's your vibe on OA? How do you see it working out? That's the kind of scary thing with him in that uh, he's already made that Ohio State official visit. He made it for the Oklahoma game, and it went great for uh, for Jason and Ohio State. But he's still got the two more to go, Penn State November 18th and then Florida November 25th. I still, even though, like you said, Dan, it's almost always been the last place he visits is where he likes the most. And, and he even told me that. He said that uh, he expects, that Penn State will get a bump with him because he's going to visit there November 18th. Uh, I think in in one way it's kind of good that he's going to visit Florida after that because I really would be surprised if he ends up in Florida. And that Florida visit might take a little shine off the Penn State visit. Plus, he then has some more time to think about things because he's not announcing until the Under Armour game in early January. So all those things said, I tend to – Slightly like Ohio State in this one, but it is basically dead even right now between Ohio State and Penn State. And um, you know, you, you've got to if you're an Ohio State fan, which all the Bucknutters are, of course, you've got to put faith or put stock in the Ohio State staff doing a great job with him after he takes those two official visits to Penn State and Florida. And I know we always say this doesn't matter, Bill. It really doesn't. But in this case. Just to be sure, I think they should beat Penn State. What do you think? Well, that that uh, they had their one, their huge recruiting weekend with Oklahoma, and the game didn't go as expected, of course, for high State fans. And it, players, while you referred to it, don't make their decision based on one game. It still changes the atmosphere a little bit when you don't win that game. So with that huge recruiting weekend for Penn State, uh, a win would certainly help with the overall atmosphere and feelings of that whole weekend. So, sure, it's 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 a huge, huge weekend for Ohio State recruiting-wise and on the field. Yeah, I just think Owe is such an impressionable kid that it might uh, have an effect on him. All right, these are and the guys. Way, he really, go he ahead. really. By the way, Dan, he really wanted to go to that game. Um, you know, he had that circled on his calendar until he figured out that, well, I, he has a game of his own that day and he couldn't, he can't make it. So, um, it, it's kind of too bad that he, he does happen to have a game that day because he, he originally was, was very interested in getting back to an official, unofficial visit to Ohio State for that game. I've got to look it up, but if Blair Academy plays the Petty School that day, he should just come to the game because Blair's headed for an L. And I digress. Two guys I want to talk about that are in the mix, but we don't talk about them quite as much. And I'm not sure either one will end up in the class. Both are safeties. Jaden Woodbay and Josh Proctor. 
Do you believe both of them will end up becoming Buckeyes? One of them? Which one? Yeah, I, I really, I, I do, Dan. I, uh, you know, I don't think either one is a, a sure thing. Obviously, you know, they're <laughs> even though they have quote shut down their recruiting, they're 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 they haven't shut down their recruiting totally. You know, they're still being recruited. Um, you know, Proctor, obviously, Oklahoma is the big pull there, and and. You just don't know for sure, but, you know, I, I still tend to think that they both end up at Ohio State, and uh, I feel confident at least one of them ends up at Ohio State. But in the end, you know, I, if you had to get an answer point blank, yes or no, on each one, I would go both yes for Ohio State at this point. Oh, that's very good news, very good news. All right, Bill. Bill's going to put his football acumen to work here. I'm going to give you the name of a team and then say real or fake in terms of them being a contender in the Big Ten. And then you tell me. Or basically, not a contender in the Big Ten, but a real threat to Ohio State and maybe what you think. Number one, Wisconsin. Uh, I think uh, Wisconsin's real. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think Ohio State has the better football team. I, I think that, uh, um, yeah, talent wise, Ohio State's a better team, but, uh, Wisconsin is a legitimate uh, top program now. You know, I, I they, the, the culture there is such that they expect to win, uh, the Big Ten championship, and uh, I think they're real. Yeah. Michigan. Boy, that's a hard one, because, uh, <laughs> people, uh, talk about Ohio State's quarterback situation and, um, and, and their offense at times, and certainly the talk has been pretty positive recently on Ohio State, but Michigan's quarterback situation and offensive play, oh my goodness, that's, <laughs> that's not good right now, and Ohio State fans certainly are loving that. Um, I, I think that's going to be a, still a very difficult game for Ohio State. You know, it's going to be up at Michigan, and uh, Harbaugh is going to—he really needs to win that game. I mean, you know, with his record against does. Meyer and D'Antonio, he needs to win that game. If he doesn't, it, uh, I don't want to say the seat will be hot, but it won't be a pleasant situation. So I, I think Ohio State, though, in the end, is going to go up and win that football game. I agree. People don't even say this. Harbaugh's one win against Michigan State or Ohio State came against a 3-9 and nine Michigan State team. Here's what I think is going to happen. If he does not win that game and they don't kind of get to where they need to be in terms of their fan base and him, you are going to hear some serious, serious Harbaugh to the Colts chatter, which I thought you would have even got earlier given the fact that Andrew Luck is there, but we shall see. And then the last one, Pennsylvania State University. Well, no doubt they're for real. Um, you know, that's going to be uh, the, the game of the year uh, for p- potentially in college football. Um, uh, that's going to be a war. And, you know, after what happened last year in Happy Valley, you know, the thing that makes Penn State so difficult in my mind is that you've got to sell out so much to stop uh, Saquon Barkley that, that it makes – the quarterback sorely much much better and we saw what he did uh to ohio state last year so that's going to be a great game uh again you know i I, i'm going to go with ohio state the home field i think is going to make the difference in that game but it's going to be a war last one bill real or fake the cleveland indians (laughs) well this is uh this is why t Terry Francona planned it the way he did. You got your ace going, Corey Kluber, and you got to hope that uh, he returns to being Corey Kluber. And I'm going to go with Corey Kluber returning to Corey Kluber and then winning that game. And, by the way, it certainly would help if a, if a certain ankle for Edwin Encarnacion is feeling better by game time. It also helps that none of those guys play for the Nats, which means they have a better chance to win. All right, people. We appreciate Bill Pinch hitting. He crushed it as always. We'll have Dwayne back for you next week. Have a great one, Bucknutters.